Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and look in again. And Rick and Andy have already uh, done a lot of my work for me, but we can go ahead and you know take a look back. I just wanna point out again, here's the basal lamella of the middle turbinate, and we've gone through it to go into the posterior ethmoids, but when I'm doing um, my sphenoid in a regular case, I tend to clear out a lot of this right by the lamina, but I don't necessarily go all the way back to this sphenoid face before opening up my sphenoid because I feel like getting out the skull base in my sphenoid allows me to come up the skull base um, a little bit easier. So after I get out this anterior ethmoid portion and I have a really good idea as to where my lamina is and my, my lateral border of dissection, let's take a freer, then I would go ahead and make the same little incision that has already been made here through the basal lamella and then see my superior turbinate. And then just like how you saw in that video I showed you, you can just sort of move this nicely over. And I'm gonna suction a little bit so you can see that without all that gunk there. And you can see the sphenoidosteo right there. And like I mentioned um, before, if you look at where the roof of our maxillary sinus is, that's exactly where I went as far as superior to inferior direction, and that's exactly where our sphenoidosteum is. It's a very um, good landmark. It's a very good way to see exactly where you should be. So now I'm gonna use that freer and just widen that a little bit. And the point of widening it is really um, twofold. It just kind of makes it much more clear as to where that is, if it's a little pinpoint or if you have any mucosal swelling around it. And I'm gonna take my straight through cut and I'm gonna take down that inferior portion of my superior turbinate. I do, unless it's a, so the question in the room was, do I always take the superior turbinate? And the answer is, if I am doing this sort of transethmoidal approach, I'm already I'm taking down the ethmoids as well, then yes, this is generally what I do. I make sure that I have a lot superiorly left and I'm not going too high, but if I'm gonna be opening my ethmoids anyway, then yes, I do. If it's an um, isolated sphenoid approach that I'm doing, will you just clean that? Then, uh, then no, not necessarily. Then I can just move it aside and make sure that we uh, take what we need um, and open up the sphenoid sinus there. So now I'm gonna take that straight mushroom punch. So like I said um, in my talk, usually I use a straight hosebin punch, but we have a straight mushroom today. And so that's what we're gonna use. And I'm just gonna start opening here laterally. And I do this in a pretty uh, systematic way where I try and kind of open up to the side, and then I, as soon as I can see better, I start opening up more superiorly here. Can we clean that? I'm just gonna, oh, thank you, perfect. Gonna bring it up a little bit better here. We've got this latex injected specimen making it a little bit more uh, beefy to pull this out. So obviously you wanna do this in a live person without stripping any mucosa. A hoseman is just uh, like a straight mushroom, except it has a little more spring to it and a little more force to it. Suction. So, here, here within our sphenoid sinus, you have a really good um, anatomy here that you can see. So looking over immediately, that's the intersinus septum, and you can see a really good bulge posteriorly here, and we're gonna open this up a little bit more. Um, I'll take, look, can I just take a 45 through cut? Yeah. Oh, can we get to the navigation screen, please? Let's open this up a little bit better. Yep, you can use a kerosene. 
our kerosene that Andy was using wasn't biting very well, so I am not using that. So we have our navigation on the screen now, and I'm just going to go straight back and point towards this, and you can see on that um, that structure, you can see I'm pointing straight back, and we have our um, cellar uh, region here. I'm going to try and get to right in this little recess. So if you can see on that coronal, this is a perfect example of our optical carotid recess. So our optic nerve is up here going across, carotid coming down below. So it's a really good uh, specimen to show that. You can see it best on the coronal plane. You can also see it um, on the axial a bit. So I think that's probably enough for a sphenoid. I'll just move on to so frontal. So, so now I'm going to go ahead and, and come up skull base, which Andy has already um, gotten out for me a little bit. And I'm going to switch to my uh, frontal navigation probe just so you guys can follow this on. And, oh, can we keep the navigation screen on for everyone? Great. Um, so I'm just going to show you that as you march forward, this is a really good way. You know, you got your skull base out in your senior sinus. So you can follow it forward and really know all the way moving forward where you are. At this point, you can see that now the septations are sort of coming down towards me, and I can't see beyond them as well because I'm using a zero-degree scope. And so usually right around here is where I'll switch to a 30-degree. So let's go ahead and do that. Some people prefer 45-degree scopes or 70-degree scopes. I always start with the 30, and then if I feel like I need any more visualization, I usually go straight to a 70. Should I just curve this? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to do the other way so that I can just do it. Um, However you want. I'm yeah. still track. Like that. Good. All right. So, oh, my backwards, I'm, I'm not, I'm used to using my reverse. <laughs> well, it's still a reverse. Is it a, is it a reverse scope? It's pointing down. Yeah. But it's pointing up. You see when I look here, when I, when I move up, it's not moving up, it's moving down. Yeah, the camera's yeah, turning. Yeah, there we go. So we have to just like, here, hold that. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Now we're good. There good. You go. Throw that at you. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Don't want to be too easy. <laughs> so let's just get some of this gunk out of here so you can see a little bit better. Uh, could I get a 45 Blakesley? Thank you. So I'm just removing some of this gunk, latex, latexy stuff, so you can see the septations a little bit better as we come forward. Thank you. So I want you to keep looking at that navigation, although the navigation is, I guess, a little bit um, off. It's okay, so so we're gonna take a 45 degree through cut, and this 45 degree through cut is my general uh, tool of choice coming up the skull base from posterior to anterior. How was your navigator off? It was a little bit low off of the skull base, just slightly low. You're going deeper than it's actually showing? I am deeper than it is actually showing, just by a millimeter or so. so so this is this is like a good reason why it's good to sort of um, have a good idea as to the anatomy as well as um, having navigation. You should never be depending on navigation um, when you can see her. Um, and, and I'm using my navigation probe a little bit as a dissecting tool here because it's a very fine and elegant instrument. So I want to just show you guys um, this supraorbital ethmoid here. So. You see, I'm in this supraorbital ethmoid cell, and, and Rick showed you that uh, before when he was ballooning. He opened up anteriorly, but this is the supraorbital ethmoid cell posteriorly. And just like how I um, sort of showed you in the uh, uh, lecture, this is always going to be posterior and lateral to your actual true frontal sinus opening. Okay, we're going to 
keep moving. Do we have a RAV40? I'll just like blow through that stuff. And I'll just use this. So now that we have that out, I'm using a frontal curette to just sort of bring this forward. We don't want to take too long, let you guys have some dissection time. So I'm just going to move all this forward and then we're going to take it with our debrider. It's okay. Awesome. <laughs> Best scrub tech ever. Where's my pedal? Thank you. So you can see this uh, blade can be turned. I'm just going to turn it to take all the stuff that I've just brought towards myself here. And you can see here at the uh, axilla of the middle turbinate, this is often a place where I'll make sure that I've taken away all of this remnant uncinate that's lateral here, because sometimes it can really kind of sit down in your view. I'm gonna take that little guy there, and we're just taking down the rest of these septations. Take these. I think I might be clogged. So I'll just point out here. So now you can see we're in that frontal sinus. And just like Rich pointed out, here's sort of some um, venous vascularity stuff um, beyond. And I'm going to just show you here. Um, right here is your anterior ethmoid artery coming across. And it's always going to be like one cell back from your actual true frontal sinus. It's never going to be right there at the posterior table. Some people see this little vessel um, that's in the skull base quite often, and they think that's their anterethmoid, but that's not it. It's always going to be one step back over here. So I think that's probably... <laughs>